everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. Yes, it is that time again. Time to take up another champion. We're going to be taking up one of my six stars to rank four. Okay, and rank fours are still somewhat rare for me anyway. Uh, but you may be able to guess who I'm about to take up to rank four if you've been following my channel. Now, there are some considerations before taking a champ up to rank four. You know, for example, are they in the seven star pool? Now, just being in the seven star pool does not mean no dice. You also have to look at, well, does this champion need to be awakened? Because if they need to be awakened, then you have to get the seven star twice. You also need to worry about whether they need to have a high SIG. If you have a champion that's really only useful at SIG 200, then you might have that six star for a while. The six star will be a lot more useful to you for a, quite a while, okay? So, this rank up, I have been waiting to do for a long time. And if you think you can guess who it is, leave a comment below. But I'm about to reveal it in five, four, three, two, one. Lady D, come on in. Lady Deathstrike. Yes, it has been forever. I grinded for her a whole arena ago. It's been days. Seem like an eternity. So let me give you a brief history. When I saw Lady Deathstrike, I was like, okay, it's going to be another X-23, who I like. I liked her back in the day. <clears throat> I liked her when we only had four stars. But I tended to use Wolverine better because of his healing factor. He was the safer option for me. Some people loved X-23, and they used her over Wolverine. Fair enough. She did more damage, but she had less heal. Fair. So I took a quick glance at her kit, and I saw a couple of things that really intrigued me. One, 90% reduction in bleed and poison. I run the recoil masteries, liquid courage and double ed. That's bleed and poison. And if you run coagulate, which I do, that basically means that she's not going to take any damage from bleed. And you know, in the beginning of every fight, if you're running double edge, you're going to be taking bleed. You got a bleed debuff on you, but I'm going to be healing from it. So that's like a free heal because I also have willpower. And I will have the debuff, since she's not immune to it, and the willpower will kick in. So I won't be taking any damage, but I'll be getting all that healing. Now, I remember back in the day when Corvus, he took no damage from bleed, but he did have that poison. And it was still good, because he healed every fight. He healed up. It was awesome. So can you imagine? Here you have somebody that has bleed and poison. Omega Red. He is poison immune. So that means I'm not going to be getting any uh, willpower healing. But he has that reduction in bleed just like uh, she does. I run coagulate. So he's not taking any damage from the bleed free healing. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is a champion that they have made for me and everybody that runs these recoil masteries. That already had me interested in her. Okay. Uh, I saw that she does rupture damage. Well, currently there's really only one person in the game. And I believe that Scorpion who can be rupture immune. He has a pre-fight. 
So that means that she has a damage type that no one, we currently have 250 champions in the game. I believe she is the 250th. And no one but Scorpion is immune to those ruptures. And she puts those ruptures on a lot. So she has a lot of debuffs. Now, there's a mastery called Despair. For every um, debuff that you put on your opponent, they have a reduction in their healing. But she also has a heal block. So for healing champions, she can shut them down in two different ways. Very, very nasty. Okay? Um, and I'm going to do a, a video, a closer look on her. But she seems to be one of those champions that I like. Now... I watched uh, a video by Nick136, shout out to Nick136, and he helped me out um, because I didn't really know much about her. And he went on the uh, uh, CCP server and tested her out. He compared the six star, um, I think it was a rank four, um, awakened with, with a good sig versus an unawakened seven star, because yes, she does come in seven star flavor. However, if you remember what I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the considerations is the SIG ability. She is a champion that needs a high SIG. You really want her to be a high SIG. Not because she can't do it without it, but if you're going to invest like I did in your six star, the six star will be better for a while than the seven star because of the signature ability. So an unawakened seven star is not out damaging that six star, awaken with a high sig. And when you get the seven star awakened, then the higher the sig, the more damage, and then they'll be able to overtake eventually the six star. So you have to bear that in mind, okay? So I chose to invest in her now. And fun fact, I have her in all the different rarities except the seven star. And the two, three, four, and five, I maxed out. And then now I took the six star to rank four. I don't know if I will take her to rank five. We will see. Because she is available as a seven star, but I think that six star is going to be better than the seven star for a time, for a time. Not only that, but if I get the seven star, I can still use the seven star unawakened. It's not like she is not good unawakened. It's just that if you're comparing the two, the six star awakened high sig is going to do more damage. So... Because I take the uh, diss track, that's where I plan on using her. I don't know how well she's going to do. Um, you may see her in Alliance War. But I've been using Nick Fury, who you guys know I just took to rank 5. Uh, I've been using him in Alliance Quest for that diss track. But I sometimes need him in Alliance War. So I do have other options. And of course, Null is a beast for that track. But I like to have two in order to, you know, not use items when I mess up or, you know, um, the game just decides that my controls are not going to work right now. So I like to have two good options for the path. And I do it in section one and two. Both same uh, nodes, really. Dish track. So for the first time, I'm going to take her into Alliance Quest uh, today and see how she does. And it may be that I will go back to using Nick Fury. It may be that I start using her because she's going to put on a lot of debuffs. She puts on ruptures even through their block. Insane. And then you have the heal block. So anybody that wants to try to heal, they're not healing. And her heal block is very easy. It's a normal combo. 
medium ending combo, bam, they got a, a heel block on them. Very, very nice. Okay, I might take her into uh, Realm of Legends and go all the way to uh, Wolverine. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I may do that later on. Uh, just to, you know, watch her heel blocking them. But now also imagine the event quest where you heal block them when they have a regeneration on, you get furies. She's going to kill it. She is going to destroy. Okay. Um, and we'll talk more about her synergies, but she has a nice synergy with Omega Sentinel. So I can easily see an event quest. I can easily see myself bringing Nimrod, Omega Sentinel, and Lady Deathstrike on a team and then warlock and then we'll see who else you know i decide to bring that is going to be a team i already know it all right anyway let's go into realm of legends and we'll fight win a soldier have a little fun you guys can see uh, a little bit of her damage and uh i'll see you there all right let's go in you can see i'm only going in with lady deathstrike and this is the first time that I am actually going in here with her. So you see me making mistakes or anything like that. This is not a video on how best to play her. I've seen a few videos, but I'm more curious about how she feels. Don't take that the wrong way. I want to see what this uh, special two, if she gets hit by his special two, what it looks like. Because... It does do a drain on on her, so... Alright, I'm gonna get hit by it. Wow. Y'all saw that, right? Yeah. I think I'm gonna like her. I think I'm gonna like her. She seems like, uh... Pretty, pretty decent. Great utility. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah i'm gonna like her i can already tell ruptures through the block y'all see this oh i'm gonna have fun and one of the places oh and unstoppable oh come on lovely Let's see what that special two look like. Mm. Wow. I like it. I like it a lot. That's actually some fun. All right. So, um, not in this video, but I am going to, um, use her in alliance quest i have the diss track uh path uh the only annoying thing is that they go unstoppable periodically stuff like that and whatever global we chose but i'm gonna take her for a spin for the first time into aq it's day four right now and see how she does all those ruptures i think she's gonna do really well and y'all saw how she took that special too right Y'all saw that. Man, I definitely am liking her. And she looks like she's going to be a good counter for several mutant champions. All right. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Smash it. Let me know what you think about Lady Deathstrike. Do you like her? You know, I, I wasn't sure. I saw a little bit of her kit. And I fell in love. I really did. And so far, and I haven't even used her 
outside of right here, what you saw right here. Um, but I think she's going to be a great counter for a lot of different champions. All right. So take care. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have some ideas on uh, how to play her, uh, who she's going to be a great, great option for, like, oh, I don't know, Weapon X, uh, Magneto, Domino, you know, folk like that. Some usual annoying um, defenders. So take care, and you all have a blessed day.